In science, sometimes big developments come in small packages. Recently, K-State researchers in the veterinary college learned how to genetically engineer the genome of rats for generating models of human diseases. Dr. Mark Weiss and his laboratory have perfected a technique using embryonic stem cells to introduce targeted genetic modifications to rats. We're trying to build tools, trying to build models that will have broad applications. So if you're interested in neural differentiation or you're interested in the response uh, after an injury, we're trying to come up with cell lines and animals that will teach us, help us to solve a, a medical mystery. Similar methods were developed with mice over 30 years ago, but the technique has been more elusive with rats. And so there's, there's tons of mouse models of human disease, but the mouse is, is not perfect. Lots of research goes a lot better in rats due to their size and their better similarity to human physiology. So if we can produce rats that have these modifications, we can answer questions that can't be asked in the mouse. Creating a rat that features a favored trait is a multi-step process. Embryonic stem cells derived from dark furred rats are modified to carry the genes of interest, which are then injected into an albino rat blastocyst or early stage embryo. These blastocysts are implanted into a pseudo-pregnant rat, which then gives birth to chimeric rats that have cells derived from both dark and white fur. After these chimeric pups grow up, they are bred with another albino rat to see if the traits engineered into the embryonic stem cells are transmitted to their young. So in this cage, we have a mom that was bred to one of the chimeric pups as an adult. So she's an albino mom. And the albino pups are pups where only the albino uh, cells contributed. But in this one pup here, this one dark pup, this pup indicates that the embryonic stem cells contributed to the sperm. So this animal is exactly 50% embryonic stem cell derived cells and 50% the albino from its mom. This method can be used with modified rats to study a wide variety of medical conditions. In the case of uh, breast cancer, for example, the BRCA gene is, is, is uh, a main component of that disease. And so if you make a genetic modification that matches that of the human disease and introduce it back into the rat, it will carry that mutation in its offspring and we can study the function of that gene. So far, Dr. Weiss's lab has created four types of embryonic stem cells that are germline competent for creating modifications that can be passed on to offspring, making it one of five labs in the world to successfully do so. Also, the lab's high success rate at creating germline competent stem cells makes it one of the most efficient in the world. The lab's next goal is to produce a conditional knockout rat, missing specifically chosen traits to better study pancreatic cancer. We've we're entered a whole new phase where we can now move efficiently forward with producing rats that have modifications that are going to be useful for research, biotechnology, translational medicine. I, I'm super excited about it. To learn more about stem cell research at Kansas State University, please visit the College of Veterinary Medicine website. A Russian scientist claims to have created his own version of the Fountain of Youth. He says when perfected, all you have to do is pop a pill to stay as youthful as you want. The medicine is currently undergoing tests, but could be on sale within a few years. Artis Natalia Novikova has been finding out more. It looks complicated, and it is. It's almost a life's work for Vladimir Skulachev. Two more years of testing, and the doctor thinks he will have finally cracked the enigma of aging. Let's get the science over with now. Apparently, it's all about how oxygen reacts in your body. 99% of the time, it turns into harmless water, but there's that 1% that turns into superoxide that later turns into very poisonous elements. So the task was to find an antioxidant that stops that process. And hence, according to the professor, stops anyone from getting old. He's been working to perfect his treatment for more than 40 years. The hard thing has been to try and stop any possible side effects. Colleagues from around the world think Professor Skulachev is onto something. 
Well, that's very realistic because it has been shown that oxidative damage is huge, and but we don't have antioxidants of the type that Skulachev has developed, and he is, you know, coined the term bioenergetics. He is, he is, he is clearly the the world's best biochemist, bioenergetics person. The compound has already undergone animal testing and the results appear promising. These two rats are siblings. The one on the left has been given the drug and is now much more lively than the other one that is dying. Finally, we hope that we uh, will manage to convince people that, uh, look, this single pill cures so many uh, treats, uh, treats of aging. So must be doing something with aging itself. Then, if regulatory authorities will accept this logic, then uh, maybe we could somehow market it as an anti-aging uh, drug. After success with the eye drops on animals, the inventor tried it on his own cataract. Six months later, his physician told him his cataract was gone. Thousands are queuing to take part in the clinical trials, which have just started. But it will be a few years before Professor Skulachev's discovery is sitting on the shelf of a pharmacy like this. Some have already dubbed the drug a panacea, and if it lives up to its promise, the treatment should have an effect on the diseases of aging and bring it with the prospect of a longer and better quality of life. Natalia Novikova, RT, Moscow. It sounds like something out of Hollywood, the curious case of Benjamin Button starring mice. In a recently published study, scientists say they reverse the effects of aging in lab mice, but don't throw out that Rogaine just yet. ABC News has the story. The key is something called a telomere. We all have them. They're the tips or caps of your chromosomes. But as you grow older, the telomeres become damaged and frayed. And as they stop working, we start aging. Scientists took mice who were prematurely aged, added an enzyme, and essentially turned their telomeres back on. You can see it before the enzyme, after. Within a month of applying the enzyme, researchers found the aged mice were back to the physiological state of their younger counterparts. Their fur went from gray to black, their skin condition improved, their fertility was restored, and perhaps most interestingly, their brains grew back to normal size. An anchor on CNN could barely wait to ask the study's head researcher if he'd found the fountain of youth, but he says it's more like getting rid of the symptoms of growing old. Though the mice in the study reversed the physiological effects of age, they didn't live any longer than usual. What we've learned is that there is a point of return for even aged tissues, uh, that uh, tissues retain the remarkable capacity to rejuvenate if you remove the underlying cause of the aging, which in this case was excessive DNA damage uh, in the mice. And DNA damage is a major cause of aging. And a writer for The Guardian explains scientists anticipate a major drawback in the treatment. Mice make telomerase throughout their lives, but the enzyme is switched off in adult humans, an evolutionary compromise that stops cells growing out of control and turning into cancer. Raising levels of telomerase in people might slow the aging process, but it makes the risk of cancer soar. The Harvard Gazette reports scientists found no increased incidence of cancer in the study's mice, but admit the topic requires further investigation. Finally, venturing off the scientific aspects of the story, a columnist for the National Post says humans have been doing things they know cause cancer for years, so why would it stop them now? Does anyone doubt that if these folks at Harvard figure out a way to make skin cream with new telomere advancing properties, people will be smearing it all over their faces? Maybe they could hand out a pack of smokes in a free trial of a tanning salon with each king size container. That should have the customers lined up outside the door. You can read the study for yourselves. Check out the links in our transcript section. I'm Jim Flink for Newsy.com. Multiple sources, the real story.